So Terraform over the past year has grown significantly. The number of providers has grown by over 20, the number of resources has grown by hundreds, and the number of contributors is well over 1,100. We've also established close relationships with all major cloud providers and are working together now to move towards 100% coverage of all resources within Terraform. And this list is actually just some of the updates that we've shipped to open source just in the past 12 months. And just as I said previously, this is actually the most we've ever shipped into open source over that 12 month period. And just to highlight a few, we've shipped the ability to have conditional values within your configurations. You have the Terraform console to play around with Terraform values uh, in a REPL type environment. There's Terraform import, so you could import single resources here and there that weren't under Terraform management before. And then just recently we announced local values so that you could actually have local variables within your Terraform configurations. So from improved stability to rich, rich new capabilities, we've consistently be been delivering to make Terraform a better and better product. And this is what's helping drive Terraform to grow as much as it is in addition to the partnerships and community. And all of this growth and maturity is really quickly solidifying Terraform as the standard in infrastructure provisioning. Terraform could be used to provision any infrastructure for absolutely any application. And in, and in striving to continue to make Terraform this standard, we're happy today to announce the Terraform registry. The registry is a place to find verified and community modules for reusable infrastructure components, as well as a place to to get started and learn about Terraform best practices. We and our cloud providers, uh, cloud partners, have seeded the registry with modules for the most popular services for the most popular clouds. These include basic modules such as best practice network layouts, as well as full application deploys such as console, vaults, and Kubernetes, and these work across all of these cloud providers. We have verified modules, which are recognizable by the blue check mark. And the verified modules mean that they've been vetted by HashiCorp both to work properly, but also with the maintainer themselves to ensure that they're updating the module and keeping it compatible with the latest version of Terraform, as well as the, as well as the latest best practices of that cloud provider itself. So for example, Microsoft is actually writing the Azure modules to ensure that you're working with Azure the way that Microsoft really believes you should work with Azure. And in addition to verified modules, anyone can publish and consume their own reusable modules. But instead of telling you how easy that is, I'd like to show you. And it's really that easy. Um, this video went from having no account and never using the module registry to signing up, publishing a module, and having it available. And it wasn't sped up at all. You could go from nothing to publishing a module in about 15 seconds. And as you can see, we surface a lot of information about modules. And one of the most exciting things is the module registry brings to Terraform the concept of module versioning. Every module within the registry has a semantic version associated with it, and we allow you to navigate those versions within the registry UI. Additionally, when you, when you publish a module with the registry, what the registry actually does is bring in the module, parse the Terraform code, learn about it, and use that to generate help and documentation about that module. So you could see on this page that we have the readme rendered, we have a list of inputs, a list of outputs, the list of resources it might create. We also parse out a list of other module dependencies, whether they're in a module registry or actually anywhere else, Git, S3, anywhere else. And we show that to the user, and you get that automatically. There's no metadata you have to type up. We parse that out of the Terraform code itself. And the Terraform registry is available today, right now, at registry.terraform.io. 
Today, we've also released Terraform version 0.10.5, which allows you to use the module registry modules. And later this year, before the end of the year, we'll release Terraform 0.11, which contains significant improvements to the module system, including the ability to constrain by module versions. But every module that's in the registry today is already versioned. And with that, what I'd like to do is invite Corey Sanders from Microsoft on stage to talk about Terraform and the module registry. Good morning, everybody. Excellent. Wow, a lot of people here. This is great. This is my first time actually at HashiConf as well, so I was raising my hand backstage. And one of the biggest things for me was trying to figure out what outfit I was going to wear. This is, takes a lot of deliberation when I'm up on stage. Uh, probably could be spending more time working on products, but instead I'm worried about what I'm wearing. And I wanted to make sure I represent as many of people in the audience as I could. And so I wanted to make sure I got you know, the, the jacket for, for enterprises in the room, so please focus on this part of my outfit. Okay. And then for, for startups, feast your eyes on this. So now we got a little bit of, the, a little bit of Star Wars going on underneath. So and let's do it again. Enterprise, startups. Good? OK, great. All right. Now everyone's ready. All right. So one of the most exciting things uh, about working with, uh, with HashiCorp is, has been work around Terraform. Uh, and it's something that we uh, came out and announced actually just a month ago that we were going to be increasing a lot of investment to make this work really fantastic on Azure. And I'm so excited just a month later to be here on stage and to be able to walk you guys through some of these things that we've already put in place. And so first, as Mitchell was just talking about, the Terraform module registry. This thing is fantastic. Uh, announced today, we actually have released eight certified Azure modules that you can use starting today. Uh, and it just makes it so much easier to do complex things in a, in a really, really easy way. Uh, so you can go check this out. We've got support uh, for compute. We've got support for networking. Uh, we've got support for SQL. Uh, and of course, console and vault also integrated as well. Um, and so all this is available right now. And to give you a sense uh, of sort of how easy this is and how simple it creates, uh, uh, makes it to, for you to create resources. If you take a little look here uh, at this example, if I were just creating a network on Azure today using Terraform, you can see I have to go in, I have to create my virtual network, I have to create my subnets and define what those look like, I have to create the security groups, I have to create all the rules, and this is great. If you want this type of control, you want this type of configuration option, you can go do it. But what's great about using a pre-built module is it's incredibly easy for just getting started in, a, in, a, in many of these scenarios. And so this is what it looks like using our module for the network. And so you can see very, very simple, just a few lines here to be able to create that same full network that I showed you. Uh, and just with when you go through initialization, it pulls down the module, and away you go. And so this is how easy and how powerful this new capability is with Terraform. And I'm really excited to be launching today with eight of those certified uh, capabilities built right on Azure. And so that's fantastic. One of the other aspects of the partnership that's been really fun uh, is one of the more beloved features of Azure is our Azure Cloud Shell. So the Azure Cloud Shell is built into our portal experience. So if you go to our portal experience, you can open up our shell. It's effectively a, a command line in the browser. Uh, and behind the scenes, we're spinning up a Linux container on your behalf. So you can run commands. And it, it's got a bunch of commands pre-installed and pre-configured. And one of the things we are announcing today is as part of this uh, command line experience, we have Terraform pre-installed and pre-configured for you to be able to run commands against this. And so let me, let me actually show you what this looks like. So this is the command line experience right here in the portal. And you can see Terraform is available there. And if I expand that out, you can see just how easy it is to get started. And so it's already been configured. It's already been set up with credentials. And away I go with initialization and I can deploy. And just how simple this is. There's no, no additional setup. There's nothing else to really learn. You can get going with Terraform right on Azure almost immediately. And the beautiful thing about this, this goes anywhere you go. So anywhere you go, you can open up this portal experience. It's any browser, any, any type of uh, uh, OS, uh, Windows, Linux, uh, 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 Mac. You can run this and get it going. Uh, the other aspect, though, you can actually run it on your phone as well. So iPhone, Android, you can pull this up and you can run these commands. 
And by the way, of course, this isn't restricted to only run against Azure. You can use this to run commands against any cloud if you so choose. And so this gives you really a nice experience to be able to get going with Terraform uh, or continue going with Terraform if you're already there. So this is exciting. Like I said, we're announcing this today. So go play with this. Uh, and it is available directly in our portal experience. And then the last thing to talk about is our provider momentum. This is something as part of the announcement that we made about, about a month ago, we made the promise that we would make our provider updates, we would make sure we kept up with any of the announcements that we're making uh, and, and kept the providers uh, to date. We have launched two new things in the last month, and both are already available uh, in the Azure provider for Terraform. So these are within days. These are available uh, for you to be able to use directly with Terraform. And so uh, examples of this, Event Grid, which is a events as a first class citizen in Azure. Uh, so event objects available, uh, available today. And our container instances. This allows you to spin up uh, container instances just like infrastructure within seconds, and they're billed per second. Uh, and this uh, is also available today. So it's been fantastic. The partnership's been wonderful. Uh, we've seen a lot of exciting customer usage. It's been great to work both with the community uh, and with HashiCorp on all of these great investments uh, and uh, deliverables. And really looking forward, to the partnership has really just begun. So there's so much more for us to do. If you've got feedback, comments, I'll take them right now. No, just kidding. Come to our booth uh, and, uh, and uh, meet up with us. We'd love to talk with you more about the work we're doing. And with that, come on back up, Mitchell. All right, thank you very much, Corey. That's all super, super exciting stuff. And so the next thing I want to talk about is how provisioning infrastructure is, of course, not a solo activity. It's a collaborative activity. Multiple people work together to build and maintain infrastructure. And over the past year, we focused heavily on uh, improving these collaboration features. And in open source, we shipped remote backends which are a marked improvement over remote state. And we've also introduced state locking, whether you're using S3 or console or other backends directly into open source to try to make collaboration safer and more easy. But we also have Terraform Enterprise, which is our tool that's purpose-built for safely collaborating on infrastructure. And over the past year, we've spent most of that year redesigning and re-architecting Terraform Enterprise to feel like a much more natural extension to Terraform. A user of Terraform should be able to adopt Terraform Enterprise, Enterprise and feel right at home with a lot more power and a lot more safety. And so this re-architecture was done in collaboration with some of our most loyal customers, and we're excited to show you some of it today. The first thing I want to show you is workspaces. We've made workspaces the primary place of work within both Terraform and Terraform Enterprise. So when you're adopting just Terraform on its own, you have the Terraform Workspaces command. You don't need to use Terraform Enterprise to get that. Workspaces are a core part of how you work with teams with Terraform using any kind of backend. But when you use Terraform Enterprise, we list your workspaces right here in an easily browsable way. With the workspaces, you could view each one, you could view its history, and you could view who has access to it, as well as what they're currently doing. And when you adopt Terraform Enterprise, Terraform actually offers to migrate all your workspaces from whatever their backend they're currently in over to Terraform Enterprise. And equally, if you choose you don't want to use Terraform Enterprise, we offer to migrate them back out. And so adopting Terraform Enterprise using, and using Terraform with Terraform Enterprise is now a much, much more seamless experience. We've also redesigned the plan and apply pages to look a lot more like Terraform and to also just surface the information you want to see. And so when you click into a workspace and click into a run, this is actually what you see today. You see the run, who triggered it, the commit who, that triggered it. That links directly to Bitbucket or GitHub or GitLab, whatever you're using. You see the plan, who, who confirmed the plan, who said it was OK. Maybe some comments there. I'm not sure if you could see it, but you could see the person reviewed the plan. If you click View Plan, you could actually see what was planned, and then it applies all in one place. And this is all stored, and the history is all visible. And we've also rebuilt Terraform Enterprise on top of an API-first architecture. So it's built on top of an open API specification, which lets you, which lets you control every aspect of Terraform Enterprise via an API. So now you could build automation around Terraform Enterprise, integrate it into your existing software, and as well as just fully configure it using infrastructure as code and use Terraform Enterprise. 
And then finally, we've moved the home of Terraform Enterprise to app.terraform.io to better represent that it's simply an extension of Terraform and something that improves Terraform with Teams. Terraform Enterprise is open. This new Terraform Enterprise is available as a beta today and will open general signups before the end of the year.